A coral atoll is a quite unique structure that we find in the tropical Indo-Pacific. Sometimes we often think of it just as the small island or just as the reef, but a coral atoll is really the whole system that is the, the ring-shaped coral reef with a lot of tiny little islands along the reef rim and then a, usually a large a lagoon in the center. There are around 280 atolls across the Indo-Pacific from as far west as Seychelles all the way through Micronesia, Melanesia into eastern Polynesia. If we view atolls as these large geo-ecosystems and understand that their nature is a nature of growing, the question becomes what can we do to restore the processes that help atoll to keep pace with sea level rise? On the one hand, we have the coral reefs that generate the sediment where we can do a lot of marine-based conservation like protected areas, regulate fishing. But then on the land, we have the seabirds as an important agent that fuels the connection between land and ocean. And we know from different research studies, when we have seabirds on the islands, the guano, the nutrient flow from the seabirds back into the coral reefs, accelerates the coral reef growth. The wind and wave action keep transporting the sediments onto these islands. And the coral reefs, if they're healthy, and intact can continue growing upward. Maldives is an island nation with 26 atolls and about 1,200 islands. Our location and the disbursement of our islands make us very self-sufficient. We also have our own language and a very unique culture to the Maldives with our own dishes centering a lot around tuna. Fun fact, you could actually have tuna for breakfast, lunch, evening tea and dinner. About 200 of our islands are inhabited and we live in very close connection with the ocean because our islands are very small and low-lying. Most of our islands are on average about 1.2 meters high and 99% of our country is ocean. Most of our traditional activity revolves around our reefs through fishing and the open ocean through pelagic tuna fishing. We have our islands sort of specialized. Um, some can be a tourist resort one can be also used for agriculture, the others can be sandbanks for locals and tourists to enjoy a life, and also really important homes for seabirds. Seabirds are found all across Maldives, um, different kinds of birds and different flavors. Fishers are actually one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to seabirds, because their life source is very interconnected with seabirds. There are so many folk tales surrounding seabirds in the Maldives. Many I grew up hearing as well. There's a saying that says the white-tailed tropic bird never lies because if you see them flying over a school of fish, you're sure to find fish there. Um, so this relationship that fishers have with seabirds is very, very special. Seabirds would have once been very abundant across the Maldives. There would have been seabirds on all of the islands in huge numbers. They've declined a lot now and it's hard to find where they are today, but there's still lots of little protected area islands and other islands where seabirds can still be found today. And when you get to these islands, it looks like the old days. You arrive at night and there's seabirds flooding in. You walk around the forest during the day and you see all these seabirds calling. And that's the standard for what we want to restore the Maldives islands to. Some of the threats to the birds in the Maldives, especially the seabirds, are poaching from uh, human beings and uh, habitat loss. It's uh, very concerning because uh, the key nesting and uh, roosting areas is being lost due to the development. We are trying to understand and study the key areas where they roost and uh, nest in the Maldives so we could actually conserve the populations of seabirds in the Maldives. Seabirds are vulnerable to many threats at sea and at land, but one that they're most vulnerable to is introduced predators such as rats. Humans brought rats to these islands and seabirds have no defence against them. So rats consume these seabirds and basically drive them to extinction on islands. If we can remove rats from islands, the seabirds return in really large numbers, numbers where they're just flooding the sky and flying in all around you. And that is fantastic for returning the ecosystem to its original state. So we are here in the Maldives to explore potential candidate sites for island restoration using a powerful tool of conservation which is like rat eradication. So we are investigating like uh, technical feasibility but also like both environmental and social acceptability of such operation and for that we are visiting the different islands of the Maldives and see what would be like the best candidates for like restoration. 
What we've learned from the past like 600 operations all over the world is the benefits are like massive for like lots of taxonomic group on islands, native ones. So especially like birds that were the most studied. So sometimes it can happen like on islands, we have like a change of like 10 times more birds after an education. But also native plants are gonna grow up, invertebrates also communities gonna change completely. From this project, we could achieve pristine environments without invasive species, which could in return bring the natural balance to the island which existed in the past. Rakarakalava Dunita, Nala Vega, Udu Hila, Kapakapatiba, Hudu Villa, Nala Bala Hutta Gelida, Rakarakalava Dunita, Nala Vega, Udu Hila, Udumatiga Penkura, Shohuane